And because of that military stance of Russia, so far Syria has not fallen. But if Turkey attacks Syria, then the, the game changes. Because Iran will then become part of the war. Iran will not stand idly by. And Russia will then have to ac accept that its historic moment, its moment in history has arrived. Russia will not be able to fold its arms and stand idly by if Turkey attacks Syria. Perhaps Christian eschatology may want to speak and recognize a Turkish attack on Syria to be the opening round for, cons for the eventual conquest of Constantinople. And so I expect the great wars are going to now commence one after the other. But we are fighting an enemy who has a messianic obsession. It is an irrational obsession. An enemy who is hell-bent without regard for consequences in achieving his goal. It doesn't matter how many must die. It doesn't matter even if most of mankind must perish. It doesn't matter if thousands of nuclear weapons are going to be used in a great war. It does not matter to that enemy. They are hell-bent on achieving their objective of establishing Israel as a ruling state in the world. And so for Russia to believe that you can sit back and the, the fight is between the Muslims <laughs> and Israel, you'll be living in dreamland because they want Russia to also bend her knee and bow before them. And they want China to bend her knee and bow before them. And that's why Russia is ringed with nuclear missiles all around you. But I don't think the Russians are fools. I think the Russians know very well what the game plan is. When these wars start and Russia becomes part of the wars, we're then heading towards what the Christians call Armageddon and the Muslims call the Malhama. And our Prophet has spoken about those great wars and that great is all wars. It's being so, such a great war, he says, that birds will fall from the sky. Indicating perhaps radiation in the sky. Preventing, for example, electronic gadgetry from working. Preventing, therefore, electronic warfare. <laughs> Preventing uh, cruise missiles and fighter aircraft and so on operating. So great will that war be. At the end of that war, or towards the end of that war, comes the conquest of Constantinople. And I've asked myself many times, well, why would a Muslim army march to Constantinople? For the Christians, yes, I can understand. Hagia Sophia. And this was your city. But why would the Muslims want to march to Constantinople? Is it simply because we want to wage a a war in alliance with the Christians to conquer Constantinople? It doesn't make sense to me. A Muslim army should be marching towards Jerusalem, not to Constantinople. And I've come to the conclusion, and when I give an opinion, of course, I always say, I don't want you to accept it. <laughs> no, unless you're convinced that it is correct. But please don't deny me the freedom to offer an opinion. 
that the conquest of Constantinople is strategically important because of the Bosphorus. And the Bosphorus is st strategically important because in the winter time Russia does not have a naval outlet from the, except through the Black Sea. And this is why for centuries now they have done every single thing they could possibly do to deny Russia control over the Bosphorus. They used the Ottomans. They used the Ottomans for 450 years and then after that they got NATO to replace the Ottomans. And so when that conquest of Constantinople takes place the military significance for me is that Russia will now be able to pass through the Bosphorus and since at that time perhaps aerial warfare will no longer be possible it is the land and the sea the land will also be devastated with nuclear warfare so naval warfare becomes very important and the Russian fleet, or what is left of the Russian fleet, and the Eastern European fleet, passing through the Bosphorus, pose a threat, a significant threat, to Israel. And this is why I say that Russia's moment in history has arrived. Because great wars are now at hand. And Russia's role in these great wars will be different from the First World War and the Second World War. So um, I would make a little summary.